Welcome to the Photography Rebuttal. Today we take a rare look behind the scenes of a TV commercial for Toyota. Hey guys, thanks for coming back to my channel. It's been a while since I made a video, I know. But uh, also thank you for uh, subscribing to it. And if you haven't yet, please uh, do so because uh, I have just hit uh, the milestone to become monetized. So yes, from now on, the channel will be monetized. That was an intention for me to do so right from the beginning. Um, I hope it's not a complete waste of your time. If you see good value in my content, uh, I hope that you can you know, watch the 30 seconds or so of whatever ads that they play. But I really appreciate it and uh, I intend to make more uh, useful content for you in the future. So the last video that I made was for Lamborghini Oricon photo shoot that I did uh, quite a while back. And uh, it got pretty good reviews and uh, performance on YouTube. And I was wondering why it was so. I hope it wasn't just because of the car, okay? But uh, I think it's because maybe it is an opportunity for you guys to see a real photo shoot for a real client job that may be rare in the YouTube universe. So if, that, if I am correct with that, I'm bringing you another one today. Now this is a different situation. I, it's not my job, it's a friend's job. And uh, it allows me the more freedom and time to just concentrate on making this video as opposed to the Lamborghini one, which is me shooting and shooting this video at the same time. And that was quite difficult for me to do. So now I've kind of freed myself from the responsibilities of the actual job, dealing with the clients and such. Now I can just focus on doing this video for you. So we're here at the location. And um, if you want, let's go and take a look. So as you can see, um, they're live on set. And for the rest of this video, I'll be doing a bit of uh, live camera and also voiceovers, just in case I don't want to disturb them while they're working. Uh, they're not sh recording audio, but still, I don't want to be just yapping away in case uh, someone has something more important to say. So um, that's how we'll do it from now on. So before we take a closer look at the behind the scenes, let me explain to you what this job is about. This is the Toyota Alphard Black Deluxe MPV, which stands for Multi-Purpose Vehicle. As you know, it looks like a minivan. Now, unlike North American minivan culture, where you would pack the family in, maybe the dog, throw in a few bikes, go on a road trip and an adventure, the minivan in other parts of the world, like Asia and maybe some of the Middle Eastern countries, see the minivan as a comfortable transportation device to move people from one place to another. The owner usually is a passenger to be driven in comfort and luxury. The Black Deluxe is a special edition aimed at the understated buyer who prioritizes stealthy travel under the radar. It is this simple, non-flashy elegance that drives the creator for this project by associating the color black with basic natural elements such as black rocks, uh, water shot under a black background, and certain textures. Here you see a rough storyboard of the video flow and the shot list, starting with these natural elements that I just mentioned, followed by some shots of the car, and uh, it's gonna pogo back and forth to link the association throughout the video. If you go to the next slide, you see similar arrangements. And again, until the end. So what we're gonna do is uh, pick certain shots from the storyboard uh, to show you a bit more detail about how it was shot. And then at the very end of this video, we will show the final ad uh, in completion. 
So looking at this image, you would think that a regular car studio, which is quite large, would be sufficient to shoot this. But there is one element in the video that is a car montage, car chasing. And uh, that requires a bigger space, actually a much bigger space. So due to the pandemic, uh, Hong Kong doesn't have any trade shows going on. And therefore, we were able to secure a deal with one of the largest convention centers uh, to rent their space for our shooting. And it's a you know 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, time slot, which is not a lot of time to get everything done. But uh, this is the space here. It is actually uh, 10,880 square meters, or roughly 117,000 square feet. So very, very large space. And you can see here that we have set up this kind of a car chasing section over here and a, a car stage over here. And this is just a rough, uh, in the end, we actually put the, uh, the car chasing down this strip and the stage was set kind of in the middle over here. So let's dive in, starting with the front headlight shot, which only takes about two seconds in the final cut. There's no camera movement here, but just a slight zoom in in post-production. So we are shooting a tricky shot because, uh, as you can see, there's just a lot of reflectors. So let's stop this and take a look at what's going on in the set here. Over here, you have a butterfly kit which consists of two light stands supporting a metal frame in which a silk fabric is used to diffuse the light. There's a separate light source outside of the frame shining through the silk, which diffuses the light onto the car. The two stands are usually on rollers, so the butterfly can be rolled around the set without having to be lifted, as in this case, which is used by C stands. Over here, you see a foam core as well as over here which can be easily purchased from an art supply store. The butterfly kit actually usually is a rental. The stage here is something that I would guess was used previously for maybe some sort of installation or a car show, car launch event, where they put the car onto this type of stage as a showcase. It's good to see that they were able to, to obtain this stage uh, as a reusable resource as opposed to it being a one-off thing. So it's good that they somehow got uh, their hands on this. Um, this black fabric here is something that's used to actually block light or reflect black. Uh, so white is used to reflect white and black is used to reflect black. So this is often called a negative fill as well. All right, let's get back to it. And uh, basically with a black car, you have to worry about all the reflections uh, because a black car is basically a mirror. So we're just fine tuning all the different types of reflections. If you want to take a look at the monitor, I'm getting right now. Seems better. You know, this Yeah, so I think we're still working on the fill about here right now. And uh, personally, I think that we should just get that grid, slap it here, throw a light on it, dim it down, and that should take care of it. But it's not my shoot, so. We've got a few more shots to cover, so let's move on to the next one. This time of the interior with a slow push in, which means the camera is moving forward in a straight line. Now, although there are a plethora of stabilized systems on the market today, from gimbals to steady cams, ultimately the best way to achieve a smooth and controlled push in is the classic dolly and track whose biggest advantage over those handheld systems is its ability to lock in the direction of travel so that you can repeat the process over and over while adjusting other variables such as the speed of your camera movement or tweaking your lighting and as for lighting you'll see the main light over on camera right which is visible right now, which is a large, roughly 12 by 12 foot square diffusion silk material diffusing the light. And there's also a tube light on camera left, as you can just see right now up there, 
which is controlling the lighting on the left side. And just behind the camera, there's also a softbox giving some frontal fill light for the behind the seat area. Overall, this shot took about an hour to complete. I'm gonna show you two more interesting scenes for this video, starting with this backlit side profile shot where the lights turn on in sequence. So as you can see over here that they're putting on a smoke show with a fog machine just to get some background fog and they're backlighting it with those uh, LED lights, four aperture 600Ds on top. And the camera is right behind me, if you see, right over there, way in the distance. And uh, we'll cut to the next frame to show you what it looks like behind the camera. This is a pretty neat shot. Okay, and here's the monitor. And what they're doing now is that they're fixing these two lights up above. We're blocking them with gobo flags just to get rid of them because it's easier to do it now than in post. There's a guy fanning the fog to get it more even on both sides. This is the ideal that what we want. So we're just trying to get more fog so it spreads across everywhere more evenly. And that's it. This shot was completed in a relatively short time of half an hour, even though it only appears for one to two seconds in the final video. Oh, and remember the shots of natural earthy elements I mentioned earlier, like water, rocks, black texture, etc. Those were shot a few days later in the studio using a Sony FS7 with two macro extension tubes for close focusing and a combination of soft fill light to make sure the shadows don't go too dark as well as hard light to sift out the texture. These shots, along with some footage purchased from an online stock library, constitute the macro shots. Now let's talk about the final shot and likely the most dynamic and visually impactful. This is the crescendo moment of the video near the end just before the high energy cuts to a smooth, peaceful finish, the car chase. Again, it's only lasting a few seconds, but the work behind it is very BTS worthy. So let's go back to the brief and the floor plan of the venue showing these light pillars. A total of 32 one meter LED light tubes arranged to form a runway for the Alpha to drive through. They are battery operated and synchronized to each other and controlled via a wireless app. The camera is mounted on a separate vehicle known in the industry as, you guessed it, a camera car. In this case, moving perpendicularly to the subject and also in the opposite direction. The camera is mounted on the car and controlled remotely by an operator sitting inside. So they're setting up a car rig here. There's a suction cup based rig, two suction cups on the hood, one down at the bumper. And this is to support a uh, gimbal, which will support a camera. So the gimbal is over here. If you pan to the left, you can see part of it already. This is the way it comes, but they're gonna take this apart and just use the top part of it and uh, attach that to this rig over here. Put the camera on that and this is going to be the chase car to quote unquote chase the, uh, let the uh, Toyota over there. And after weeks of planning and preparation, tens of thousands of dollars spent on the crew, equipment and venue rental, a full day of shooting, not to mention the time in post-production, it all boils down to a mere 45 second video, which, in the grand scheme of things, is just a pittance in the work and content produced in the world of commercial advertising. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and share. And please consider checking out my other videos about commercial photography and subscribing to this channel. Thank you for watching, and I hope you come back for my next topic.